Hi, I'm Sheila from To Love, Honor, and Vacuum with another marriage vlog. Today, I want to read you a sad email that I received recently from a woman. She says this. She says, I am 25 years old, and when my husband came into my life, everything seemed fine. I really believed I was marrying the man that God had for me, but let me be honest, he is not my type at all. I thought I could do this. I thought I could swallow what I wanted, but after 13 months of marriage, I have had enough. I thought I could make it work, but I can't any longer. Praying and fasting hasn't helped. I have realized I never really loved him, and I have shared all this with him, but he doesn't get it. Almost every day, I regret marrying him. I wish I could turn back time. Every time I meet my siblings, my cousins, or my friends, or read or see on TV the situation I dream of, I get so upset I can't even breathe. I daily think about getting free from this bondage so that I can at least hope again. Wow. That is really, really rough. And I don't think this woman is alone. I think many people get married and they think that they're marrying the person that God has for them. And then after they've been in that marriage for a little while, they say, we are not compatible. We are just not meant to be together. And how long am I supposed to keep this up for? Do I have to stay here forever? Because everywhere you look, people are totally in love. And you read these romance novels and you look on television and on the movies and everybody is so happy. Doesn't God want you to be happy? Weren't you supposed to be happy? I mean, you did everything God said. You waited until you were married. You prayed about it. You got married, and now you're not happy. God isn't keeping his end of the bargain. So what are you supposed to do? Well, let me just give you a few thoughts. And these are going to be harsh. So just be prepared, because I'm not going to be easy on you. But basically, here's what happens. We all get married with unrealistic expectations. We all expect our husbands to live up to this, uh, this sort of standard. And we don't necessarily look at ourselves. She got married and she saw that her husband really isn't the kind of person that she thought that she wanted to be with. And so she gets upset. She withdraws. And she even told him. She even said, I don't think I ever really loved you. So what is he feeling? He must be thinking, he must be whirling and reeling from this too. He must be really hurting. But here's the thing, ladies. When God tells you to get married, he doesn't tell you to get married so that you can be happy. He tells you to get married to increase the holiness in the world. As we learn how to compromise, as we learn how to think of someone else's needs, we find ourselves happier in our marriage. What you need to do in order to get this, to, this marriage to work is to realize two things. The first is, life is not going to be better if I get divorced. Most divorced people do not end up happier five years later than people who stuck it out in the marriage. They actually end up worse off. And not just that, uh, second marriages have a higher rate of divorce than first marriages. So your best chance at happiness is to actually get this marriage to work. I know that may seem like it's impossible right now, but just believe me on that. The best chance of happiness is to get this marriage to work. But here's the second point. Your best chance of happiness is not if your husband changes. Okay, let me repeat that. Your best chance of happiness is not if your husband changes. It's if you change and if you learn how to love him. Sometimes we get our eyes so focused on what he is not doing that we don't look at what we are not doing. I know that's hard when you're feeling lonely and I know it's hard when you think we just are never going to match. But let me tell you another story. There's a couple I know they've been married for 40 years. When they first got married, it was awful. They had a lot of kids in quick succession. The husband was just very rarely there. He didn't play a big part of the parenting role in the first 20 years of their marriage. She was often very, very lonely. But then something interesting happened. After they'd been married for 25 years, 30 years, he started doing more housework. Today, he's a great grandpa. He just He's wonderful with his grandkids. He does more with his grandkids than he did with his own children. But he did. they only got to that point where they are so happy and so compatible because they stuck it out in the hard times. And today, they have a great life. If you divorce because your husband isn't meeting your expectations, it is very, very unlikely that you will find someone else who will meet your expectations because your expectations are realistic. Instead, you learn how to love. And when you love, when you change the focus from him to you, it's amazing how your attitude changes. And as your attitude changes, as God changes your heart, God will likely change his too so that you are able to connect. So you need to go to God in prayer, let go of your expectations, and let God change you. Get your eyes on you, not him. I know that's a hard thing to hear, but trust me, that's what I did, and that's what really worked in my marriage, and today we are so happy. 
So God bless you. I know it's tough, and I know it seems like there's no way out, but with God everything is possible, and what he is asking is, will you trust me? Will you believe me, or are you still going to do this on your own? Don't do it on your own. It never works.